Your company? Insilo. E-N-S-I-L-O dot com. Exactly. Yeah. What does Insilo do? So Insilo is uh, what we call an automated DDR. And by automated, we mean that it allows real-time prevention, uh, and uh, which makes it possible to stop the threats in real-time and not uh, just detect things as they happen. Right. Okay, uh, so stopping is the verb. I like that. Yeah. Uh, we hear a lot about you know detection and real time detection. That's great, but what are we going to do about it once we once we detect it? We're going to get on the phone and call the IT guy who's on vacation, and what you know. Yeah. So tell me how you stop them. So basically, what we do is uh, we have uh, uh, we monitor things in the uh, operating system level, and uh, th what we do is we trace the code uh, that led to a given action, uh, and that's it, and then we detect everything that led to the action and block it at that point. Now, it, ha it happens totally in real time. I mean, real time, I mean, up to the second. Yeah, that's okay. fascinating. Now, uh, tell us how you apply it. Is it, do you use any hardware to do this? Is it just software or how do you do it? Um, it's software, it's installed on uh, each endpoint on the organization. Uh, it works in a kernel level, uh, basically. Uh, and uh, the way we do it in real time is by uh, making the uh, the kernel traces uh, uh, really fast. I mean, what, what, how it works is that each action is being traced uh, as it happens. Now he said kernel, and I know that doesn't mean popcorn. So you better take that question. You, you're next. Correct. Go ahead. So. Uh, if you can describe to you know to our audience a typical incident, so for example, uh, you, a bot is uh, mm -hmm. downloaded and runs through the servers. How, where would it be detected? And when you talk about the operating level, what about the app level? How does that work? Okay, so we can take uh, NotPetya for example, uh, things that just happened last month. Yes. So uh, uh, let's take uh, let's talk about uh, Eternal Blue, which is uh, one of the uh, infection vectors. Um, basically, it uh, injects code into a critical service in the operating systems, like, like LSASS, okay? And uh, injects some kind of memory into that. Now, that memory is then trying to take actions. It's going to try to override the MBR, for example, to communicate to other devices across the organizations and infect them. Uh, and what the tracing allows us to do is to see that this is a specific code chunk somewhere in LSSS, which is a critical process, try to do a critical action, and this is what we block, actually. We don't need to know exactly what it is, we just need to see the way that it got there and what it's doing. So no, like, go ahead. Go, sorry, sorry, it's like a virus that goes through the body, you want to know that it emanated from a particular point, you want to stop it at the finger, and okay. not when it reaches the liver. Exactly, so this is what why we trigger once data consequences uh, action is made. For example, um, or overwriting a file or uh, creating a communi communication outside. Okay, those are data-related actions, and this is when actual damage is being made. Okay? Now, how do you distinguish uh, Insilo from other companies that do similar things? Why are you guys a little different? So I think the main difference from other EDRs like product is the, the real-time prevention. Um, and this is especially important in ransomware case, on, disrupt on disruptive attacks right. case, because you don't have time to respond. Right. Um, but this is also true to non-ransomware attacks. Uh, the same can happen if someone got to the machine and got this point of data which you find critical and you just got it. Uh, this is why we think that pre real-time prevention is key in those kind of things. Now, my brain is much smaller than hers, so I have to ask these dumb questions. So, I'm the end user, I'm Dorothy, the secretary, I'm sitting there going, click, 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 click. What, what's going on? What, is it because Insilo has stopped something? As me, the end user, am I seeing anything on the network that's going to slow down my workflow, uh, make me say, wait a minute, we have to stop? Because if you're interrupting a threat and attack, is it going to slow down the workflow of the business? Yeah, this is true. So uh, most attacks are going to stop in a, in a very uh, fine granularity. So the specific action that the malware does is going to be stopped. But clearly that is not always possible. Right. Uh, in this, is, this case, the users will, will be notified that something is going on on this machine. Okay. Uh, and in that case, you should expect things to function. Yeah. Uh, well, it's, it's fair. I mean, if it's that serious, you got to shut it down. Yeah. But, you know, when I put some programs on my computer, 
it slows it to a crawl because it's interfering. It's a different application, right? But it, I get frustrated because it's waiting to check my internet, waiting to check the website, waiting to check the email, mm -hmm. and it's just, it goes to a crawl, right? So I always wondered how these things work on the large network scale, if it slows down the overall network, not just your product, but I mean other things like this. It seems like there really isn't an, a disruption to slow down a network flow, just an incident that, st that stops it. Um. Yeah, so uh, again, this is why we try to block things that's specific to relate, related to the incident itself. Right. Because that way uh, you're stopping it before that thing slows down the network. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, now, the specific thing is uh, using all the CPU, it might affect the, the, right. the end user th th at that point. But it's still better than um, having the user completely unable to work. So, Udi, what keeps you up at night? What do you worry about? So, uh, I guess mostly uh, targeted ransomware and okay. uh, uh, things similar to the, uh, the, the things that happened in uh, South Korea when they ju uh, managed to encrypt a whole bunch of Linux servers and then demand a huge ransom. I mean, this is the changes uh, from ransomware that's uh, just doing uh, random attacks into things that is more like an operation, right? which is much more significant and allows much bigger ransoms. Udi Avo, Encilo.com, E-N-S-I-L-O, find you on the web. Thanks for coming on Security Guy TV at Black Hat 2017. Very great product, and uh, we thanks for joining us. Now, the rest of you guys that are watching live, Thank you. what we're going to do here is cut in between uh, interviews. Give us about three or four minutes. We'll be up at the next interview. Uh, and we're doing this all day till 5 o'clock, I think. Yes. And then you can see the other interviews we've already done, which is 62 of them. They're already in the queue there on uh, livestream.com at Security Guy TV. All right, so stand by for the next show, and thanks for coming on the show. Thank thanks. you. Thanks.